Hello, good afternoon, this is Rob Koster for Card Game Expert and today I'm going to be talking about Tron. Uh, so yeah, Tron is uh, a, li a deck that has been dominant in modern for a long time and I'm just gonna start at the start, get to the beginning, get going on it and uh, yeah, let's see how this goes because it's a pretty long one. I actually wanted to include Eldrazi Tron as well, but I'm guessing it's already going to be a long video. So I decided to uh, give Aldrazi Tron the respect it deserves and do it in a separate video. So if you're wondering why am I not seeing any Thought Not Sears in here, that's because I specifically kept them out for the Aldrazi Tron video. So let's get started. On the 12th of August on 2011, I I found a list that was running Cloudburst. And if you're wondering, wait, were you go weren't you going to talk about Tron? Why are you mentioning Cloudburst? Cloudburst is uh, what Tron always wanted to be. Cloudpost enters the battlefield tapped, adds uh, a waste for each locus on the battlefield. This is just the original Tron. If you look at this list as well, you can see like the cons are already here, all this dust is here. This deck is running Primal Titan Summoning Trap, that later became a very different archetype. But the Wormcrawl Engine is here, Expedition Maps, Stirrings, like all of those are here. Uh, yeah, now there's one less of them. Anyway, uh, the Eldrazi are already here and... Yeah, Emrakul, the Aeon Storm, Ulamog, like all of those are already here. So this is definitely just the precursor to Tron. And the sideboard, we have Chalice of the Void, Fire of the Relic, Nature's Claim, Tormod Script, and Bajuka Borg. So why is this deck so powerful and what does it do that makes this better than Tron? Well, first of all, you get Eye of Ugin. Well, Tron ran Eye of Ugin until it got banned as well. So that's not that special. What this deck does run, though, is a Cloud Post. And... Cloudpost says you add a waste for each locus on the battlefield or a colorless mana for each uh, locus on the battlefield. Okay, so you go Vesuva, copy the cl the Cloudpost, and uh, you have Glimmerpost as well to gain some life. So this is this is a very insulated from aggro package. You just yeah you just gain a bunch of life when you, when you have like three lands and every land drop you play gains you four life. That's insane. But the amount of mana this generates is absolutely not balls. It's just, it's just not okay. You play one cloud post on turn one, you generate one. All right, that's fine. You play a Vesuva on turn two, copy cloud post. Now you both of your cloud posts generate two, so you have four mana on turn two. That's already very dangerous. And then you play a glimmer post on turn three, and now you gain three life. Your Cloud Post makes 3 mana, and your Vesuva makes 3 mana as well. So you have 6 mana, gain 4. So that's basically Tron. And then you go ahead and play a 4th Cloud Post. So you have 4 of them. And at this point I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I just realized it's very small. Excuse me for that. Anyway, so you play a 4th Cloud Post, or your 2nd Cloud Post. You have 4 locusts in play now. So now, this one makes 4 mana. This one makes 4 mana. This one makes 1. That's fine. And this one makes 4 mana as well. So you have 30 mana on turn 4. That's insane. That's that's not okay. This deck very regularly went like turn 4. Okay, I'll go and play Karn. Just play Karn on turn 4. And it's gone. So turn f turn 1, Ancient Stirrings or Expedition Map. Turn 2, Explore. Turn 3, like a Garruk. That's fine. Turn 4. This deck would easily just play turn 4. Karn liberated and worm core. And turn three, Karn definitely not out of the question either. So this deck just did everything Tron wants to do, but better. I've seen this deck cast turn five Ulamog and Emrakul and stuff, and you're like, well, that's not that bad. But yeah, it was. This deck was absolutely nuts. Just yeah, no, this deck was absolutely insane. So. Uh, let's see, it also did very well on the Pro Tour in the hands of Jesse Hampton. This is a very different build, and I'm going to be burning a lot of tickets trying to rebuild this. Uh, this is Pro Tour Philadelphia. This is Breach Post by Jesse Hampton on the Pro Tour. This is on the 3rd of September. And this is just something else you can do with this deck. This is a Through the Breach deck. It's using a Wall of Roots, Overgrown Battlement, and Gruel Signet to ramp up to, to, to uh, Oracle Mudaya and to Through the Breach. And just trying to cheat in some creatures into play. So first off, you're trying to cheat in Primeval Titan, Terrastodon, Green Suns. Also casually including Green Suns in it here. Uh, come on. And you're playing for Emrakul, for Ulamog. And this is this is just a legacy deck. That's all I can say about this. This deck very easily just goes and 
kills you. That's just what this does. Just turn one, play a forest, get a green sun zenith. Get a dry tarbo, turn two, play like an overgrown battlement, play a, a, uh, let's see, a cloud post. Oh, there it is. Play a cloud post and just get it going. This deck very easily can through the breach you on turn four, which is... Like, I don't even have a problem with getting through the breach on turn four, but this deck will hardcast Emrakul the Aeon Stone on turn four or five. It's absolutely nuts. The amount of mana this generates because of the overgrown battlement is just crazy because... Overgrown Battlement is an 0-4 with Defender that makes a crap ton of mana. It's adding green for each creature with Defender you control. And it's not only Overgrown Battlement itself. It's also a Wall of Roots. So yeah, this is a lot of mana. And yeah, this deck will just hardcast Emrakul the Aeon's turn on turn 4. That's just what it does. And that's not okay. It's just not. Also, there's Punishing Fire in the sideboard for the growth of the Burn Willows. Uh, we have Seal of Primordium, Kasari Primary, Dismember, Fires, Brooding Saurian. I, for the life of me, don't know why this is in here. I really try thinking about it. I have no clue. So, if anyone knows, let me know. Uh, Chalice of the Void is in here as well. Just all the fun stuff, all the fun times. I'm going to make this bigger as well. Looks better. Bigger is better. And let's see. Um, yeah, just ve very, uh, very fast mana. And yeah, that's just super consistent. And yeah, that's way too good. So... On uh, the, let's see, oh, on the 14th of August in 2011, I found the first blue-white gift Tron deck. So this is an actual Tron deck. And here we get the Ursus Mine, the Ursus Power Plant, and the Ursus Tower. And they're named after Ursa Lord High Artificer. And I think it's unbelievably fitting that the first Tron deck that I could find was a blue Tron deck. Ursa is a blue card, so I, I love this. This is what they call Gift Strong, and this is a deck that's meant to uh, just play like a control deck, and at the end of turn play either Thirst for Knowledge or Gifts Ungiven, and just be like a blue-white control deck. This is a blue-white control deck splashing the Tron lands to get a big late game. This is not a actual Tron deck like most people think of it. Uh, but yeah, just blue-white control, 4 part to Exile, 2 Oblivion Ring, playable back in the day. Day of Judgment, Knight Errant, uh, Elspeth Knight Errant, Wrath of God, just... All these sweet little one-offs. So you go, okay, I need a Wrath of God effect. So end of turn, I'm going to go ahead and get a Day of Judgment, Wrath of God. Hello, uh, come on, hello, hello, Burial. And let's see, where's the fourth one? There should be a fourth one in here somewhere. Oh, and the Knowledge Dust, there we go. So you go ahead and... So you're like, okay, I'm dead on board. End of turn. Gifts aren't given. Look for these four. It doesn't matter what you give them. It, it They'll rot your board anyway. Like, it doesn't matter between these. So that's what this deck is trying to do. And it's just trying to kill you with Mind Slaver, Sundering Titan. Uh, that, oh, that's the Condescent in here as well. Blue Tron staple to, to this day. Uh, sideboard, just a bunch of targets for the gifts on given as well. There's a ghost quarter here for actual Tron, Tomot's Crypt, Pitting Needle Condemn, Circle of Protection making an appearance. I f I regularly forget this card is more than legal. Uh, Jotun Grunt, Kataki Wars, Wage is in here, Ruined Halo, Trinity Sphere, Pulse of the Fields. I had to look up what this does, but luckily I got this shown. And we have, I love this so much, a Crovex Ascendant Hero. I started playing in Times Power, so seeing a Crovex Ascendant Hero in Modern makes me so happy. Uh, yeah, so that's that. That's the first uh, actual Tron deck that I could find. And this is just a control deck splashing for Tron, basically. Oh, yeah, they're doing Academy Ruins with Mindslaver, by the way. Uh, so Academy Ruins. Come on. And Mindslaver. Come on. Magical Line is being very slow today, so I'm going to work through it. Uh, Academy Ruins. Uh, yeah, puts target artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. So what you do is you make a million mana. Mindslaver your opponent. You take the turn. Then you on your upkeep, Academy Ruins the Mindslaver back to the top of your deck and do it again. And you take all the turns. So that's uh, the win come for this one. And then on the 20th of September in 2011, Cloudpost is banned. So we don't see a lot of Tron for a while until we get to the 19th of February. And I actually found two uh, decks there. So the first one that I found was by Louis Scott Vargas. And this is another blue-white Tron deck. And this is the first time uh, that I found someone using Unburial Rite. So what this does with Gifts Ungiven is... 
uh, yeah, you end of turn the gifts aren't given. You look for just two cards. You don't have to look up to four cards for gifts aren't given. You can just be like, okay, I found two. You're gonna put both of these in the graveyard. So what you do is, you go end of turn, look for unburial rights, and uh, like an Iona or an Alice Norn, depending on the matchup, and you just get the unburial rights and the Iona in your graveyard or the Alice Norn, and then untap, play the unburial rights and. Use one of these to lock out your opponent. So against like mono red burn or something, you just put like Iona on red on turn four, and against I don't know like Infect or something, just Elish Norn minus two minus two. Yeah, th they're not getting through that. So that's uh, the combo here. For the rest, still just a blue white control deck for Remond in here, for instance. But yeah, splashing Tron. Also, I should mention, this deck is named Tron because it's named after... I need to look this up. I did not see this uh, anytime, anywhere. So, this is named after Voltron and it's like a cartoon or something, I'm guessing. So, it's like a bunch of cat robot thingies. Let's see if I can find a good picture of it. So... Uh, da -da -da -da. So it's like named after this. Uh, I'm pulling up a picture. Uh, so it's named after this. So this is uh, Voltron and these things combined, like these cats combined into like this giant robot. And this is called Voltron from what I can tell. And that's what the deck is named after. So the more you know. And yeah, we have like this one as well. Uh, it's called Voltron Legendary Defender, I think. I've never in my life seen it, and but I felt like I should include it. So, The lands themselves are named after the Urza, the Lord High Artificer, who is like the Saruman of magic as far as I can tell. I'm not a lore guy in the slightest, so he like builds some stuff in his tower and he uses a power plant for electricity and mines stuff. So I'm guessing, yeah, like I said, I think he's like the Saruman of Magic the Gathering or something. I have no clue. I just want to make oodles of mana and kill people with it, so, yeah. And that concludes our lore lesson for, lesson for today, and yeah, that's plenty for me. Then we get to 2000, and, oh, we stay on the actual same day. This is a list that's, uh, come on, go back. Oh, my notes are gone. No, my notes are gone. Give me a sec. Ah, uh, there are my notes again. So, this is Breach Tron, and this is on a PTQ in Barcelona. And it's a deck by Simon Lay, and this deck is uh, going to cost me a lot of tickets because, man, oh man, do I want to play this one. So what this deck is trying to do is uh, very similar to the to the uh, deck that we just saw, the Green Battlement deck, where it's trying to like ramp a bunch of mana and then just uh, through the breach in an Emrakul. And yeah, this uh, does it on the blue red side. So you have Expedition Map from the tr for the Tronlands. And basically the plan here is to either through the breach in an Emrakul or an Ulamog or a Kozilek or a Godo getting a better skull. <laughs> I think like <laughs> this seems so bad to me. It's oh my god. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the plan is to through the breach in uh, something cool and then just go ahead and uh, kill them with it. If you can breach this in though, Tron lands do actually cause big things. So you're like a control deck, Pyroclasm in here, Lightning Bolt, Electrolysis here. Yeah, I, I knew that I was screwed over the moment I saw Electrolyze and recall through the breach and Tron land in the same deck. I was like, oh no, I'm going to lose so much tickets to this. <laughs> but I'm, I want to play this so badly. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the plan is to through the breach in a big guy or just hard cast them with the Tron lands. And win that way, so for Condescent in here, to repeal in here for some board control. Uh, sideboard, Chalice of the Void, Engineered Explosives, Worm Coil, Engine making an appearance. Hercules Recall for Affinity, Combust for Splinter Twin, Relic, Lightning Bolt and Tech Edge for other Tron decks. So yeah, that's uh, going to be my money burner this week. Uh, let's move along. Then we get to... Let's see this one. So yeah, this is the first list that I could find that is pure mono green Tron. And this is a list by Matic Penko. 
And this is, yeah, this is just the first mono green Tron list I could find. And this is already very, very similar to what we see today. Like, there's, uh, there's Prophetic Prism in here that's not in, in, in anymore these days. Talisman of Impulse, not here anymore. But for the rest, like, we have four Ancient Stirrings. We have four Sylvan Scrying, four Chromatic Sphere, four Chromatic Star, four Expedition Map. Like, we're already getting very close to the list that's just seeing play today. So we have, like, this one and this one. So this is already just over 40 cards towards the, what the deck is looking like today. So yeah, just Tron is just a deck in, in 2012. Like some nuances changed with this. Some cards got printed, some cards got banned. But yeah, this is just already really close to the Tron we all know and love today. So uh, yeah, I can say that without sarcasm, by the way, I actually love playing Tron. So and I don't mind its presence in the metagame at all. I think Tron has a very healthy effect of making sure there's just a big derpy ramp deck. And I think that's really cool to have in the format. I did think Tron did not have enough answers early in the format. But I feel like that's fixed now. I think a lot of decks can be Tron. Except when you're brewing mid rangey decks. So yeah. Tron definitely a brew crusher. And But yeah. no, I, I think Tron is absolutely fine in the format. Because I know people will ask me this. Yes I have, I have played a bunch of Tron. I... Tron is probably in the de in the list of decks I've played the most actually at this point. So yeah, I definitely just enjoy playing Tron. Going Mulligan to 3, playing Tower, playing Plant, playing Mine. Can't liberate it and your opponent be like, you mall to 3, you peep, peep, peep. It's, it's just great. It makes me laugh. It's fun. Highly recommend. Uh, Cyborg, we have some spell sky. These are mostly here for Infect because Infect murders Tron like nobody's business. When when your plan is I'm gonna play a land and a land and a land and there's something big and there's a deck that tries to kill you on turn two and you're like wait but I don't have my lands yet you need an answer so they play spells card some relic of progenitus in here some ancient grudges combust for twin pyroclasm seal of primordium and some worm coils so yeah uh, Matic Panko first list I could find that's like actual green Tron. Uh, then we go to uh, 2000. We're still in 2012. 2012 was a big year for Tron. So uh, this is the first green red list I could find, and it's a list by Ch Children, Children, Child, oh Childress, by the way. And this list, yeah, this is the first version of this that I could find. But this list became quite a staple. The main deck Pyroclasm stayed for years. They, these stayed so long. I, I found this as late as 2016, 17 running main deck Pyroclasm. It's just... Yeah, Tron needs early interaction and Pyroclasm is just exactly what Tron needs. So, yeah, this is uh, Green Red Tron. Uh, yeah, Grove of the Burn Willow still staying. No, uh, what's it called? Uh, Punishing Fire though, because it's banned. So, uh, Cyborg, Guttural Response, Ancient Grudge, Combust, Pyroclasm, the fourth one, Spells, Guide... Fire Spout, just 5 Wrath of God effects in Fire Spout and Plasm. Uh, Beast Within, Mind Slaver, Worm Core Ancient. So, yeah, this is... I mean, look at this. Sylvan's Crying, Ancient Stone, Sphere, Star, Map, Relic, Worm Core, Karn Liberated. O Stone already making an appearance here. Uh, yeah, some Eldrazi. Like, this got changed up a bit, but... 2012, and the deck is already just mostly the same as it is today, so... That brings us to uh, 2012 as well. We're still in 2012. So this is uh, a deck by Caleb Estrada and GP Columbus. And this is the first Grand Prix Top 8 I could find for uh, Aldr uh, for for Aldrazi Tron. Yeah, for Tron. And yeah, look at this. Explorers getting cut. And yeah, this is just Tron as we know it today. Like if you sleeve this up today, you will win games. That's just all I can say. Like, this is just a perfectly reasonable Tron deck. Let's see. Oh, the Eye of Ugin is banned, so change that. But for the rest, super reasonable Tron deck. You could sleeve this up today, do fine for yourself. Like, you could do really fine for yourself. So, yeah, 2012, Tron just already Tron. And that's kind of the thing that people love and hate about it. Tron is definitely the kind of deck where, like, okay, I'm going to invest in this once and then I'm set for the rest of the format. Whereas other decks just have to be keeping on the buying cards train. That's not the real sentence. Other decks keep having to buy cards. And 
Tron is just like, I have the Tron lands, I have some forests, I have some some eggs. Uh, the Chromatic Sphere and Star are called eggs. Uh, I'll get to that in a different video, the one about eggs. So, be on the lookout for that. It's gonna take a while though. It's a lot of puzzle work, like the deck itself. And yeah, so, Cyborg, Wormcrawl Engine, Beast Within, uh, Combust, Pyroclasm, Torpor Orb, Craft Digger's Cage, Nature's Claim, Qu Ghost Quarter. So, yeah, 2012, just Tron being Tron. And then we get to 2013 and we go to uh, Shock Trooper. For those of you who know their Magic Online history, this is a very familiar name. Shock Trooper is a name that's uh, just uh, always being mentioned around Blue Tron. He Shock Trooper is just the Blue Tron guy and for good reason. He was the actual first one that I could find a result with so I was very happy with that because I kind of sneakily wanted to include him anyway. And he was the first one that I could find to play the pure blue Tron list. So, for Thirst for Knowledge, uh, looking to discard an artifact at the end of turn. For Solemn Simulacrum, for Expedition Map, for Talisman, Oblivion Stone, Treasure Mage, Remand, Worm Core, Mind Slaver, Platinum Angel, Sundering Titan, Condescend, Repeal, and Spellburst. So, Spellburst, if, you, if you're not familiar with Spellburst, if you have enough mana, uh, let's uh, put it over here for a second. If you have enough mana with Spellburst, for instance, with Ursus Mine, Power Plant, and Tower, you can just lock out your opponent. If they're in top deck mode, they draw one card a turn, and you go Spellburst, counter it, buy back Spellburst. You just lock them out of the game completely. So that's why there's one Spellburst in here. And Spellburst is sneakily a very, very powerful card. This doesn't look like much. It's like, uh, counter target spell, convert a mana cost X. Yeah, whatever. Buyback. Oh, three mana. That's really expensive. But this card is sneakily very, very powerful. Uh, let's see. Also, Academy Ruins here for the Mind Slaver lock. Uh, yeah, so this is the first Blue Tron list that I could find. Cyborg, uh, basically same stuff, different color. Some Trick Binds in here. Uh, spell Sky, Dismember, Relic, Pithing Needle, Spell Pierce. So, stuff that interacts fast. And yeah, that's just what Tron needs, like a turn 1 and turn 2 play, because the deck is, yeah, for modern standards, turn 3 is late, especially during this time. Then we get to, uh, let's see, we go to Grand Prix Brisbane with Gary Wong, uh, Gary Wong and Cameron Harris. And the two of them both got a top 8 at uh, GP Brisbane, so that's the 6th of October in 2013. And uh, let's put it like this. So yeah, this is just... Uh, look at this list. This is just Tron. Like if you sleeve this up now, you'll do fine. So not going to go too in-depth about it because this is just Tron. I just wanted to mention this weekend because it got a double top 8, which is really sweet. One Lanoa Waste in here, uh, by the way. Just uh, so you can... Uh, I, I figured it out earlier. What was that for? Oh yeah, for Cyborg Slaughter Games. This uh, stops combo. Tron needs interaction for combo, so so the one of Lenoir waste very easy find easily findable with expedition map, so that's why it's there. Then we get to the other list. This is also a GP top eight on the same day, same deck basically. And yeah, just just yeah, this is just Tron. Like this, except for the Eye of Ugin, is just Tron. So just Kelvin's crying, O Stone, where I'm caught. I, I would sleeve this up in a heartbeat today. Like, I would have no problem doing that. Uh, let's see. Cyborg for Nature's Claim, Spell Sky, Torpor Orb, Fire Spark, Mind Slaver, Wimcoal Engine, Sundering Titan. So, lots of Mind Slaver still in the deck. But uh, uh, just as like with other decks, the deck will get more uh, streamlined over the years. And then we go to... Let's see. Oh, yeah, one more GP top eight. Uh, this is Fabrizio Anteri's uh, GP list. He made a, he made a finals appearance, so very high finish. Uh, yeah, just the, this is basically the same deck. Just Eye of Ugin over here, Ghost Quarter, Grove of the Burn Willows, Mine, Power Plant, Tower, Relic, Expedition Map, Chromatic Star, Sphere, Stirrings, Four Pyroclasm in the main, Scrying, O Stone, Worm Coil. It's just Tron. You can, I mean, People are always like, wow, Tron and this and that, and God, I hate Tron. But Tron is just the benchmark for modern. That's just it. It's just like, yeah, no, I play modern, so I need to have a Tron matchup. And that's okay. I, I really don't understand the hate, except for, eh, my opponent played a card and I couldn't beat it. Well, yes, I'm sorry, but 
This is modern. This is a big part of it. Uh, Nature's claim, Torpor Orb, Spell Skite, Combust, Ancient Grudge, and three Stone Rain in the sideboard. This has to be for the Tron Mirror. I can't imagine anything else. I do like it though. It's cool. Uh, Dismember, Wimkle Engine, and the Emrakul move to the sideboard, but mostly just the same stuff. Same stuff, different day. Uh, come on. Oh, come on. Then we get to 2014, and in 2014, the Gift Strong deck makes a resurgence. So that's because of this deck. There's an, there was an MTG uh, Premier event, a modern Premier event. And yeah, uh, Whitefeet did really well in it. It's on uh, the 16th of March in 2014. So this is just uh, Gift Strong again. And yeah, they did just really well. So in 2014. Gift Strong really making a comeback. And while it didn't get in any really big finishes, it, it yeah, it had a comeback and it saw quite a lot of play. So I wanted to point that out. Also, Porphyry notes, and this just makes me dream happy dreams at night. So Sphinx's Revelation with Tron Lance. Oh man. Ooh la la. This makes me happy. Just I want a Sphinx's Revelation for 10. That's that that's just yeah. I wanna do that. Sign me up. I'll take two of those. And so, yeah, 2014, just the rest of the regular Tron decks, like the green-red deck, the green deck, the blue deck, just kind of trucking along, not much changing. So we go along to 2015, and then we get to this list. And this is the first list that I could find that... Uh, why was this in here again? Uh, Craig Krager, uh, looking at my notes. Oh yeah, this is definitely just people brewing with Tron. So this is the 28th of June in 2015. And the regular Tron decks are just still trucking along. But I came across this and this is just beautiful. I, I love this deck so much. I don't know if it's any good. But this is Craig uh, Krager and he is trying to like build Tron Stoneblade without Stoneforge Mist. Because that's like... Four battle skull in here. This is great. And and at first I was like, okay, he just wants a good burn match. But look at this sideboard. It's such a beauty. Just a beauty. We have sort of body and mind if I need protection from green and blue. We have sort of feast and famine for black and green. We have uh, sort of fire and ice, light and shadow. We all know him. Sort of war and peace. And I was like, this is amazing. I have to include this. So definitely still. Just the green Tron deck, the Gift Tron, and the blue Tron just being very consistent finishers, doing well. But people definitely brewing along on the Tron deck. So I had, I felt like I had to include this one. This is like a Stone Blade version of Tron, and it's it's great. I love this. There's a few more brews in this list. I I did not include the Charge Counter Tron deck because I do think it's kind of deserving of its own video because it evolved from a bunch of other decks. But yeah, felt like I should include this. So yeah, here you go. You can do really cool stuff with Tron decks. And uh, let's see. Then we also have uh, Rob Hunsucker, his deck. And this is the first list that I could find that had a Ugin in it. So let's see where it is. So yeah, all your regular Tron stuff. Also for Mishra's Bauble here for zero mana card. Or this is just trying to make the deck faster. And uh, let's see. There's some Oblivion. So like all of this is super standard. And this is the first time that I could find Ugin the Spirit Dragon. So yeah, uh, Ugin, welcome to the club. And immediately four off. I, it didn't stay a four off for a lot of people. But so yeah, this is the first time that I could find an Ugin. And so I bought the Eye of Ugin. Three boils in the sideboard. 2020 would be proud. Emrakul as well. So basically your plan against like control decks is to board in Eye of Ugin, Emrakul and three boils. And go to town on the mana base and the life total with the Emrakul. So that's what that's for. So that's the first time I found an Ugin in the list. Then we go to... the Let's see. So that's this one. Yeah, that should be this one. So here we have uh, Fabio Chisa's list. Do I say that correctly? Yeah, I think that's a... Uh, this is so hard to read. Is that a P or an F? It's either Fabio Chisa or Fabio F Chisa. Either way, I'm sorry. I didn't write it down. I think it's a Fabio though. So yeah, anyway, this person, 
uh, is the first list that has the first list that I could find with the Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger in it. Just the, just the one of trying it out. I definitely remember there being a lot of debate on if Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger was good enough. Well, we all know how that ended. It ended with everybody's lands getting eaten on turn four after they mulligan to to zero. So, yeah. Anyway, this is the first list that I could find, and this is on the 11th of October in 2015. So Ulamog quickly made its way in and stayed in. So I bought Rending Volley, Nature's Claim, Relic, Spell Skylight like from the Lone Feet, the Clan, just anti burn, anti control, anti twin stuff. Like, sidebots in modern are super predictable and always basically the same. It's like, these are my bad matchups, include a bunch of cards for them. Oh, also, uh, Sanctum of Ugin making an appearance. Yeah, this card is just great. You go, like, make Tron, play Sanctum the turn after, play Khan, liberate it, get Ugin. It's, they still do it today. It's that good. Then we go to 2016, where, yeah, I'm, I'm just not including the big finishes, and that's for a reason, because there's so many of them. I'll just show when I'm done with the video, like, how many big finishes Tron has. So, uh, in 2016, on the, uh, let's see... So yeah, this is on the 20th of February in 2016, and this is the first green-white Tron list that I could find, and it's just green-white because it's splashing for Path, of, Path to Exile. So gone are the Pyroclasm, they lasted for four years, which is a very long time. And in with the Path to Exile, they needed to kill big creatures, and Pyroclasm wasn't doing it, so Path to Exile making an appearance. And... Yeah, you just get a better sideboard when you're in white. So you get Ray of Revelation, Rest in Peace, Sacred Ground. This uh, Sacred Ground, I'll keep it up. This was one I had to read as well. So whenever a spell or ability an opponent controls causes a land to be put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield. Yeah, this just stops land destruction basically. Uh, timely reinforcements as well and some more removal in uh, the Warping Wheel and the Engineered Explosives. Uh, but one other little smidgen of a thing happened in uh, 2016, and that's uh, first of Oath of the Gate, which was printed on Jan January 22nd. It, they released it, and as I said, I'm not including the Eldrazi Tron deck because I feel like it deserves its own video at this point. And on the other thing that happened in 2016 is that on the 4th of April 2016, Eye of Ugin got banned. So Eye of Ugin is a card that says colorless Eldrazi spells you cast cost 2 less to cast. That's already really busted. Like, that's insane. We'll get more into it on the Eldrazi Tron video. The other thing this deck, do this card does, and that's why Tron is very into it, is search your library for a colorless creature card, reveal it and put it into your hand. So what, what this basically does is always make sure that Tron has a threat. So, okay, I'm turn one, expedition map, turn two, uh, Sylvan's Scrying, turn three, I have Tron. Okay, cool. Uh, play a Karn, and turn four, play an Eye of Ugin. Oh no, I'm out of threats, end of turn. Okay, I'll go and get my Worm Coil. End of turn, I'll go and get my Worm Coil. End of turn, I'll go and get my Worm Coil. John does not like when you do that. And then you draw a Nurse of Star, and you're like, oh, I'll go and get my Ulamog, I'll go and get my Ulamog. And it's like, oh my god, please stop, I'm playing a fat deck, please stop. And uh, yeah, Tron just had the actual inevitability, and that was really powerful. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it got banned on the 4th of April in 2016, and people replaced it with all sorts of stuff. I saw Cavern of Souls. Uh, later in modern, I saw Blast Zone. It's a few years uh, down the road, but I saw Blast Zone. I saw more Ghost Quarter. I saw Tectonic Edge. I saw, uh, what's it called? The Green White Draw card and Horizon Canopy. I saw all of them. Like, nobody got to a real consensus on what they should run. I saw Ugin's uh, Sanctum as well. Just a Sanctum of Ugin. And just a lot of, a lot of different things, but they were all replacing the Eye of Ugin. Uh, so with that being said, that's 2016, on to 2017, so here we have Aaron Hurst, and this one I am including, because this is just, uh, nah, nah, I'm sorry, I shouldn't include this one, this is an Eldrazi Tron, this is my bad, moving along, <laughs> I'm sorry, that one shouldn't be in him. uh, let's see, so, we're moving on to 2018, on, uh, the, the, Wait, I'm missing something here. There's something going wrong. Ah, crap. I forgot to include a list. Okay. 
anyway, in 2017, we had uh, Morioka Ryota. And he was the first black green throne list I could find. He was running black for collective brutality and fatal push. I'll just look those up. I'm sorry, I forgot to add the list. So, collective brutality. Death brutality. Uh, collective brutality. That won't find anything. So, brutality. I'm sorry, I'm just doing like a F it, I'll do it live at this point, so. Okay, so they were splashing, uh, of, yeah, they were splashing Black for Collective Brutality. This is in 2017, this is the same set as the Eldrazi came from. Uh, so Collective Brutality, uh, choose one or more, target opponent reveals their hand, you choose an instant or sorcery card from it, that player discards that card. Target player gets minus two, minus two until end of turn, or target opponent loses two life and you gain two life, so. This is just everything thrown once. It's a discard spell against control. It's minus two, uh, minus two on the on the. Uh, it's just a removal spell against creature deck, and it actually gains life. And burn is one of Tron's very worst matchups. So getting to do all of these really uh, buffing the burn matchup as well. So I'm sorry I didn't include a black green list, but it was it was very uh, seeing a very uh, wow. It was seeing a lot of play in uh, 2017. Definitely just the staple Tron deck in 2017 was Black Green Tron. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, they also played Fatal Push. But we all know what Fatal Push does. So I'm going to move along now because this is kind of a fumble. Yeah, that brings us to 2018 where we have the uh, South African GP champs. And that gets us to uh, Jonathan van der Bell. And Jonathan van der Bell is... Uh, Playing blue green Tron. So this is Simic Tron. And this is just kind of a, a love child between blue Tron and green Tron. This is this list is the reason that I ended up including both uh, blue and green Tron. Because they kind of mash together here. So there's like two condescent in here. The old uh, Ulamog Ugin Khan Liberator Worm Call package is in here. There's condescent. There's four mana leaks in here. And this is just a different way for Tron to be interactive. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, World Breaker making an appearance. Nature's Claim, Pipping Needle, Relic, Spell Skies, Whopping Wheel. So all of those making an appearance. But yeah, this I, I like this list. It's 2018, Blue Green Tron. I have Ugin being replaced with either Ghost Quarter or Sanctum of Ugin. This list has both. And Yavi Maya Coast because it costs... Uh, it, it makes colorless mana. That's why it's this one. Uh, doesn't need to, The deck doesn't need it specifically, but that's why it's there. Uh, let's see, then we get to 2019, and a bunch of things happened in 2019. So the first thing that happened is, uh, well, actually pretty bad news. Uh, there is a Magic the Gathering Pro called, uh, there was a Magic the Gathering Pro called uh, Yuya Watanabe. And he was playing Tron on the Mythic Championship number two, and they found out that his sleeves were uh, folded. So uh, let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, so just taking a random source here. So this is Yuya Watanabe, and yeah, he he cheated in Mythic Championship too. He what he did was uh, fold the corners of his uh, sleeves on the Tron land, so he could shuffle to them. So yeah, not great. Yuya Watanabe was a Hall of Famer, so yeah, he was removed and he was suspended for thirty months, so he's still not allowed to play. Uh, let's see, mate. May 10, 2019. Yeah, he'll be back in like 2022, 2023, somewhere like that. And yeah, it's uh, not great. It's a shame. I, I was a huge fan of the guy. So yeah, it sucked. Definitely one of the darkest moments in Magic uh, Pro history for me. Uh, with that being said, let's move along to better times. So in 2019, something that also happened was uh, on the 30th of April... I got two lists, so I found a blue list and a green list that started playing Khan the Great Creator. So we have Trellon here, which is a user that I also wanted to include. I've played against Trellon a bunch, we just queue into each other at times. I've played them like four or five times I think at this point, we just queue into each other. Uh, so yeah, this is a list, Khan Sign of Ursa in here. And Khan the Great Creator in here. Just the first list that I could find. That's uh, a Khan the Great Creator list. So 
It, uh, yeah, let's read it. Uh, Khan the Great Creator activated the abilities of artifacts. Your opponent's control can't be activated. So kind of a stony silence already, which is really good. Affinity was still a thing back then, so... Until your next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its converted mana cost. So that's really cool. Uh, let's see. Is it already here? No. Oh, he wasn't playing it. There's, a, uh, there's another card that is really good with that. So I'll name it in a second. And you may reveal an artifact card you own from outside of the game and choose a face-up artifact card you own in exile. Put that card into your hand. So what this does is just con the great creator. Let's look at myself. I'm playing against Dredge. I'll take a Talmud script. I'm playing against Burn. I'll take a Chalice. I need some life gain in a beater. I'll take a Battle Skull. And they're destroying my land. I'll take a Crucible. And yeah, that's just what this does. It just makes your Tron a Wish uh, deck. And that's insanely powerful. It's, it's staple to this day as far as I know. So the other list that I could find, and this is the mono green list that I could find that has Khan the Great Creator, just immediately went up to four. Like, no question. Oh, this is a Magic Online user named Ambulance. I don't know who they are, but yeah, they just uh, went up to four Khan the Great Creator immediately. Two Ugin, the Ineffable as well in here, so very cool. Uh, so for the rest, uh, the main deck is super standard, so not much to talk about there. The Cyborg, however, has, let's see... Craft Digger's Cage, Stopper Orb, Spell Sky, just all of these one-offs to make sure that you can actually, uh, yeah, just find them. Like, this part is just a wish board. So, like, all of these are just a wish board. And then we have the Microsynth Lattice uh, lock. And, yeah, Microsynth Lattice, what happens is you pl play a card in the Great Creator. And you, yeah, let's say you have Tron. So, you have Tron, you have 10 mana. And you're drawing a card in the Great Creator. And you'll just win on the spot, so... Khan the Great Creator reveals an artifact from you own from outside the game. You choose Microsynth Lattice with that. And now all permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types. So you're like, well, who cares? Well, Khan turns all of them off. So when you have Khan the Great Creator and Microsynth Lattice, you're, you, you can do whatever the hell you like. You're, you're just having fun. Your opponent, however, cannot play the game anymore. You can't tap lands for mana. You can the only thing your opponent can still do is attack with creatures. So they need to have enough creatures to kill the Karn. Or you just win on the spot. And yeah, just a lock effect like that. Well, Wizards wasn't uh, very pleased with it. So it didn't stay long, but it was super powerful while it was there. Uh, so let's see. That brings us to... Oh, uh, this is the green black... Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry. I just mislabeled the green blacklist. So here it is. Uh... Morioka, Ryota, uh, Four Collector Brutality, One Fatal Push. I'm sorry, this should have been mentioned in 2017, but I uh, put it in the 2019 uh, list, so excuse. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Here it is. Uh, two Will Breaker in there, Four Collector Brutality, as I already mentioned, Fatal Push in there. Uh, Khan Liberated, All is Dust, Ugin, just very standard, but Collector Brutality, just everything thrown once. So, yeah, there it is. Cyborg, uh, Lost Legacy as well. This is just an anti-combo card. Track Tusk making an appearance. This card is just very powerful. Been in and out of the deck uh, since 2013. So, uh, Surgical Extraction for Graveyard stuff. And Ghost Quarter for just a Tron Mirror. Uh, for those of you who have never played a Tron Mirror, don't. It's boring. The first one to get Karn wins. That's really all there is to it. Uh, then we go to... Let's see, 2019 gets me to this list. Yeah. Uh, so this is Robert Long's list, and it's a list from, uh, let's see, the 5th of October in 2019. And this is the first list that I could find that's running Once Upon a Time. So Once Upon a Time is one of a... Once Upon a Time is a really busted card. If this spell is the first spell you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. That's already like giant alarm bells going off in my head. It's like, oh god, no, it's a free spell. And then it goes, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random one. At this point, people were asking for an ancient stirrings ban. Because it sees five cards for one mana, which they think is too much. It's really good. I don't know if it's too much, but it's really good. And then print. Then they printed Once Upon a Time, which is just that effect for zero mana. It's like, yeah, this is the most busted thing on the planet. So, yeah, uh, Tron, highly consistent using Once Upon a Time. And, yeah, the cyborg just stayed the same. Microsynth Letters still here, this member. Weather the Storm, this is a Modern Horizons card that uh, 
is uh, for uh, what you call it for burn. They go like burn you, burn you. I I'll gain nine. That's fine. Uh, this is also very good against storm. I've beaten storm casting weather the storm uh, a few times. It's great. Oh, one thing that I should mention is uh, I kind of forgot it. So we have Khan the Great Creator here, and not only is his uh, last ability very good, his middle one is as well. So until end of the until uh, next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its converted mana cost. So what you do is you get Liquid Metal Coding, and Liquid Metal Coding reads target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. So what happens here is you Liquid Metal Coding their land on your turn. Their land is now an artifact. You then make it a 0-0 zero, zero creature using the one non -tar target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature. 0-0 zero, zero creatures die to state based effects. So yeah this is just tap destroy target land. These two together. And that's really good. So Tron still having a lock piece. Still really good. And uh, let's see something else I should mention here. Oh yeah, Veil of Summer makes an appearance, but Veil of Summer is just a disgusting piece of magic card, so... I really wish Veil of Summer wasn't printed. So yeah, that's uh, mostly the things that happened. And on the 13th of January in 2020, Microsynth Letters got banned. So yeah, after that we just get the Tron list that we all know and love today. Like, yeah, just this list is... Just what it's like today. Uh, you know, once upon a time is banned at this point. So this is gone. But yeah, this is just a 2020, 2021 uh, Tron list. I mean, you can sleep this up, no problem. Uh, Cyborg as well. Like once upon a time is banned. Microsynth Lattice is banned. But we all knew once upon a time would get banned. It's way too powerful. Uh, so that's it for the green Tron deck for now. This is just what it looks like today. So some other things that I wanted to mention are uh, people are still definitely brewing with Tron. So one of the lists, I've, I found two lists by a person called Jen Sim. And the first off is this one. This is also something you can do with Tron land. So you have Ursus Mind, Power Plant, Tower, Powering Out, Stop. Oh, it's Simi Spirit Guys banned these days, but... Powering out, Khan liberated, Ugin, and you're like, okay, that's all fine, Khan, the Creek of Fire. There's also Pyromancer's Goggles here, so add red. When that mana is spent to cast a red instant of sorcery spell, copy it. Then you go ahead and cast, where is it? Uh, Blasphemous Act, targeting, uh, getting Stuffy Doll as well, so. This is definitely a brew, but I like that people are brewing with Tron. I felt like I should include some of the brews that Tron uh, has seen over the years. And this is another list they did, and this is, this is Yori Tron. So this is just a blue Tron deck with Wilderness Reclamation, Shark Typhoon, Pen Glacial Worm. And the, all of this is just blue-green control. But yeah, it's powered out by Tron Lens. So felt like I should include it. The, while there is definitely a staple uh, modern Tron deck, like the green Tron deck is the, the golden standard for what a Tron deck looks like in modern. There are a lot of really cool things you can do. So felt like I should show a few of them off. And then the final thing that I want to make. As I said, I wasn't including top finishes for Tron. And that's just because there are so many of them. I mean, look at this. I went looking for major and professional finishes. So over here, major and professional finishes for Tron. And I just got page after page after page of results. So... Yeah, if you want to dive into these, have fun. There are a crap ton of them. I mean, this just keeps going. It's insane. There's so much. And usually I'm like, okay, I'll include a few of them or I'll include a mox finish. But I'd have to include dozens of lists. And that's just way too much for one video. So after having shown a few brews, talked through the history of Tron and... As I said, Eldrazi Tron getting its own video, Charge Counter Tron getting its own video because I feel like they're a part of a different family of decks. And yeah, as always, if you like the content, please like, comment and subscribe and thank you for watching.